Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So I wanted to come on here and talk about the whole Bobby Brown Jr. situation. A lot of people have been wanting me to weigh in on this. I was trying to wait until more information came out, but as of yet, we still do not have a determining factor of what caused this young man's death. Um, even today, right now, they're even saying that the um, medical examiner's office is putting everything on hold with Bobby Brown Jr. So we may not know for a while exactly what took his life, But what is being reported by the Daily Mail, um, a few friends have reached out on social media and sent tweets and, you know, um, things like that. And one of the last people who spoke to Bobby Brown Jr., they were saying that he sounded very sick. He was doing a lot of coughing, um, feeling like he couldn't breathe, saying things like, you know, we never know when we're going to die. Um, And then also his girlfriend that he called Wifey, she also came out and spoke as well. So let me go ahead and play you guys this clip here having to do with Bobby Brown Jr.'s death. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Bobby Brown's son, Bobby Jr., has passed away at the age of 28. Singer-songwriter Landon Brown, who is the oldest of Bobby Sr., confirms the news on Instagram. He pays tribute to his dear brother, writing, I love you forever, King. A Los Angeles police spokesperson tells E! News that authorities responded to a report of a medical emergency on Wednesday, November 18th. While on the scene, they discovered a dead body but were unable to disclose the identity of the deceased. Bobby Sr. fathered Bobby Jr. with ex-girlfriend Kim Ward, who he dated off and on for nearly 11 years. Bobby Jr. was following in his father's footsteps. He regularly promoted his passion for music on Instagram. Most recently, Bobby Jr. shared his song, Say Something. Bobby Jr.'s girlfriend, Anna Reed pays tribute to the young musician on Twitter, writing, The heavens gained an angel, but I lost my soulmate. Bobby Jr. and his older sister, LaPrincia Brown, appear to be very close. In recent months, she shared many photos of the two, including a picture taken at her birthday party in September. Bobby Jr. is survived by his sister, LaPrincia, as well as half-sibling Landon, Cassius, Hendrix, and Bodie Brown. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So this whole situation is just really sad, especially because, once again, Bobby Brown has lost another child. But I also have to look at this very, very esoterically, and something with this situation does not sit well with me at all. This is just way too much death in such a short amount of time concerning this family, okay? So let's bring it back to Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston lost her life in a bathtub in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Hills Hotel. This was back on February 11th, 2012. And the crazy thing with Whitney Houston's death that never sat well with me, one, of course, me, like you guys and many people, were huge fans of Whitney, right? But I remember the day that we found out that she died, it was Grammy night. And at that point, you know, many people were thinking that the Grammys were going to be canceled. Everything would be shut down. Oh, no, not in Hollywood, honey. The show must go on. And what's sad is that Whitney was pronounced dead at 3.55 p.m., meaning that her body laid upstairs. They did not take her body out because they claimed they didn't want people filming the bodies. It was coming out the Beverly Hills Hotel. But that's still stupid because when they went to finally go get the body, paparazzi was right there. So it wouldn't have mattered if they were filming her at 3 in the afternoon, 4 in the afternoon, or 11 o'clock at night. I always felt like it was some type of sacrifice. Granted, she was on drugs. Granted, she had drugs in her system. But let's go a little bit deeper. The industry definitely, you know what I'm saying, put her in a position to get hooked. And as we found out later on in life, she also was the one who got Bobby Brown hooked onto drugs as well. Now, one of the things that always never sat well with me, and I remember watching that whole Grammy fiasco back in 2012, is that her body was upstairs in the hotel. And the whole time her body's up there, they're going on with the performance. The performance that year was at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And right below Whitney Houston, Nicki Minaj was doing this creepy ass, you know, performance was very dark. She had, you know, somebody dressed like the pulp there. 
And it just looked like a whole Illuminati type sacrifice. Y'all go ahead and check this out. What's your name? All right, so you guys just saw that clip. That's what was going on the whole time Whitney Houston's body was upstairs, for y'all who don't know. It was so bad that even Shaka Khan, I remember her doing an interview um, on CNN where she spoke about it, and she was like, you know, in what world would that be okay? In what world can you just not put things on hold and make sure things are going fine? Why did they feel the need to have a whole party? Because even after the performance was done, they still were partying. They were st there was still a party at that hotel. If you guys have not been to Beverly Hills Hotel, it is huge. So there were still festivities going on even during her death. So I want you guys to go ahead and check out this clip really quick. You were, I think, going to go to the Clive Davis party. Yes. It was a surreal event where Whitney's body was still in the hotel and there was this sort of party where apparently half the room were in tears, the other half were kind of partying. What did you feel about that? I thought that was complete insanity. Um, and knowing Whitney, I don't believe that she would have said the show must go on. She's the, she was the kind of woman that was there, stop everything. Uh-uh. I'm not going to be there. You know, um, I don't know what could motivate a person to have a party in a building where the person whose life he had influenced so, so enormously, and whose life had been affected by her. So they, they, they were like, I don't understand how that part I, mean, I, I had Clive Davis by pure chance in here on Friday night with Jennifer Hudson, and he obviously worshipped Whitney, and I think he must have gone through agony when he heard this news, knowing it was two or three hours till this event. Right. And I think he took the decision yeah. to turn it into a tribute to her. And I, I understand that. I mean, he obviously was wrestling I with the, the right thing to do. That would have been right if it would really was a true tribute. And, you know, and a true tribute, you know, might have been a truer, a more honest tribute from, in my, you know, in my opinion, would have been maybe call everybody together, let's say a prayer, and um, let's eat dinner and go home. What is your, I, what I is? I couldn't get dressed. I was supposed to go to the party. I just got off a plane from Miami at about 5.30. When I, as soon as I hit the, the tarmac, I found out, I, I heard. And I couldn't, get, I couldn't put on makeup. I couldn't get dressed. I, I couldn't do anything. I was paralyzed. I, I couldn't do anything. You guys just heard what Shaka Khan had to say. So clearly she's bothered by the situation. And clearly that did not sit well with her as it did not sit well with a lot of us. So we watched all of that play out. And then we watched Bobby Christina slowly spiral out of control. Um, she had lost a lot of weight. You know, people were really concerned about her. Then she came out and said that she was engaged to Nick Gordon. And Nick Gordon was somebody that was attached to the family. Um, basically, he was a childhood friend of Bobby Christina. And when he was 12 or 13, he got kicked out the house. So Whitney decided to take him under her wing and claimed him as like a nephew. So they were supposed to be like, you know, play cousins. Well, after her mom died, that was the closest person she could lean on because her relationship with her father was not that close. And so her and Nick Gordon really got involved in a lot of nefarious things, really got involved in drugs real bad. And so all of a sudden, you know, we get an APB that Bobby Christina was found, you know, face down, unresponsive in a bathtub. Now, remember this date. This was January 31st of 2015. So this was the end of January. She was found unresponsive. And so for months, you know, we were all like, OK, is she going to be OK? What is going on? You know, and nobody really heard too much. We just knew that she was in some type of lawn care, you know, facility. Then about five or six months after that, 
it was announced that Bobby Christina died July 26, 2015. So that's when they had her official death date and they had her funeral shortly after that. That never sat well with me at all. Like I said back then in 2015, I'm saying it today in 2020. I believe that Bobby Christina died on January 31st, 2015, not July 26, 2015. Y'all go ahead and watch this clip. Turn around, y'all. Turn around. Come on, George. Turn around. Clap your hands. Two beautiful and talented women gone before their time. Mother and daughter together on GMA's summer concert series in 2009. My name is Bobby Christian. I just want to say, clap your hands. Ten years earlier, a near mirror image. Happier times for a family now devastated by loss. The death of 22-year-old Bobby Christina ends a long and painful chapter. Possible cardiac arrest. 21-year-old female in the bathtub, face down. January 31st, 2015, Brown was found face down in the bathtub of her suburban Atlanta home. She was placed in a medically induced coma. In June, she was transferred to a hospice facility. Her father said in a statement, Chrissy was and is an angel. I am completely numb at this time. My family must find a way to live with her in spirit and honor her memory. Our loss is unimaginable. <laughs> The loss hard to comprehend three years after her superstar mother, Whitney Houston, died in a similar manner in a bathtub of a Los Angeles hotel. The coroner ruled it was an accidental drowning with cocaine use and heart disease contributing factors. Bobby Christina Brown's death now under the microscope. Just days after she was transferred to hospice care, the trust set up by her multimillionaire mother filed a $40 million civil lawsuit against this man, Nick Gordon, who Whitney Houston took in to live with them when he was 12 years old. He was raised as Bobby Christina's brother and after Whitney's death, they became romantically involved. The suit claims Gordon was physically abusive, that he knocked out two of Bobby Christina's teeth and alleges they had a loud argument the day Bobby Christina was found unconscious in the bathtub. The lawsuit also says Gordon lied to get control over Bobby Christina's money, claiming they were married, even withdrawing $11,000 from her account while she lay in her coma. Mom, I would never hurt anybody. In March, Gordon was on the Dr. Phil show, his mother and Dr. Phil trying to get him to accept rehab. Gordon admitted to using alcohol and Xanax before the interview. I want to let all you guys know I did everything possible in the world to to protect them. Substance abuse, possibly an issue in Bobby Christina's life as well. She was photographed smoking what appeared to be a bong, and she appeared seemingly impaired on her own reality series, The Houstons, on our own. At the time, she was only 19 years old. I'm going to make it now. Um, It's going to be good. In the weeks before she was found in the bathtub, there were potential warning signs. Bobby Christina lost control of her car after a tire blew, crossing into oncoming traffic and colliding with another car. The friend she was with and the person in the other car, both hospitalized. And then this. Some kind of domestic dispute. A 911 call reporting fighting at Bobby Christina's residence. But when police arrived, no one was home. All right, so you guys just saw that clip of Bobby Christina and them just kind of talking about her death. So now, you know... We get to 2020, okay? And the first day of the new year, we get news that five years after Bobby Christina's death, Nick Gordon, her boyfriend, um, he also died. He died this year, January 1st, 2020. I believe that Bobby Christina died January 31st, 2015. Nick Gordon was confirmed dead January 1st, Alpha and Omega, um, 2020, right? And they were saying that when he died, there was black stuff coming out of his mouth. Um, he allegedly died of a heroin overdose. But Nick Gordon was literally tortured the rest of his life, especially after Bobby Christina died. It's like this young man went crazy. I remember seeing him on Dr. Phil and he was just, you know, blubbering and he was crying and he was just so strung out. It was very painful to watch, you know, the lives of these two young people. Nick Gordon was only 30 when he died. So he was still a relatively young person. And it's really sad that that's how his life chapter ended. 
Yeah, go ahead and check this out. Good morning. Nick Gordon and Bobby Christina had a very complicated relationship and now nearly five years after her death, he has passed away after a reported overdose. Overnight, ABC News has learned the former fiance of Whitney Houston's only child, Bobby Christina Brown, has died of a reported drug overdose. According to the Daily Mail, 30-year-old Nick Gordon was rushed to a hospital in Central Florida during New Year's celebrations after having a series of heart attacks. Doctors were unable to revive him. An attorney for Gordon confirming his death, but not commenting on a cause. Gordon was long rumored to be Whitney Houston's adopted son, though the music star never fully adopting him or including him in her will. He was there the night the music superstar accidentally drowned in a hotel bathtub surrounded by drug paraphernalia just before the Grammys in 2012. Gordon and Bobby Christina eventually becoming engaged. We're really, really very happy. But their union rumored to be tumultuous. In 2015, Bobby Christina, then 22 years old, in a scene eerily similar to her mother's death, found unconscious and unresponsive with drugs in her system in the bathtub of the Georgia home she shared with Gordon. She remained in a coma for six months and later died. In 2016, Bobby Christina's father, singer Bobby Brown, joined his daughter's estate to file a $10 million wrongful death civil suit against Gordon. And although he was never charged in the case, a judge ordered him to pay $36 million to her estate. Gordon's brother telling ABC News overnight, we are devastated by the loss of my beautiful brother. He leaves a void in the hearts of my family and his friends. Nick's battle in life was not an easy one. All right, so you guys just saw that clip about Nick Gordon. Now, if you guys also remember, Nick Gordon did an interview a long time ago. He's the one who let it slip that the night that Whitney Houston died, the day before, Bobby Christina was found unconscious in the bathtub of the same hotel. Y'all know me, honey. I don't believe in coincidences. And that's never sat well with me either. Whitney Houston died February 11th, 2012, but on February 10th, her daughter was found in a bathtub and she almost drowned. And then fast forward three years later, Bobby Christina ends up being found unresponsive in a bathtub. That's too much of a coincidence for me. It's almost like they had to finish the job. You know, that just always creeped me out that she was found in the bathtub the day before her mother died. Then her mother dies the next day in the bathtub. Then three years later, she's found unresponsive in a bathtub. You know, like I said, a lot of rituals are performed with water. I've talked about that. Water spirits, the marine kingdom, things like that. You know, and I believe that this was all one big ritual being played out. Yes, drugs play a big part in this family's legacy and this family's background. So far, we don't know if drugs played any part in um, Bobby Jr.'s situation. From what his friends are saying, they're saying that he didn't use drugs. Um, other people are saying it might be, you know, C-19 that caused his death. I'm not sure. We just have to wait for more information to come out. But... You know, this is one thing that people don't understand about the industry. And I don't care if you're talking about the music industry, the movie industry, the television industry. When you get to a level of fame where where you have global recognition, where no matter where you go on the face of the earth, you are recognizable. Um, there's a price to pay for that. OK, that's why a lot of these people, a lot of these celebrities tend to not really be happy because they think they want the fame. They think they want the success. They think they want everybody to know their name. And then once they get there, they find out it's not what it's cracked up to be. And that place tends to be very lonely because you don't know if people are genuinely trying to be friends with you. And and, you know, if they really genuinely care about you or if they just genuinely or if they only are there for the superficial bullshit, if they only care about the music and they only care about, you know, what you can do for them. So it ends up being a very lonely place. That's why a lot of them end up having to turn to drugs and alcohol. And on top of that, in the industry, so much dark stuff goes on. Everything from, you know, people being molested, raped, um, you know, having to go through all types of things that a lot of times they have to take these heavy drugs to numb out the pain. I will never forget that creepy ass Whitney Houston, Diane Sawyer interview. Many people focus on when she says, I don't do crack. Crack is cheap. Crack is whack. That was the punchline for the interview. But if you look at that interview and you watch it deep and you watch it esoterically, 
One of the parts that always bothered me with that interview, looking back on it, is the part when Winnie Houston tells Diane Sawyer, I'm the biggest devil. The biggest devil is in me. It's not the drugs. I am the devil. And then she does this real creepy smile, laughed, very creepy. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Crack is cheap. I make too much money to ever smoke crack. Let's get that straight, okay? We don't do crack. We don't do that. Your crack is whack. Is it alcohol? Is it marijuana? Is it cocaine? Is it pills? It has been, at times. All? At times. If you had to name the devil for you, the biggest devil among them? That would be me. It's my, it's my decision. So the biggest devil is me. I mean, either my best friend or my worst enemy. And that's how I have to deal with it. All right, so you guys just saw that video. And like I said, you know, a lot of these celebrities, you know, may not fully understand what they're getting into and how spiritual this industry is. And by the time they finally become aware and they understand, you know, how deep they are, it's too late. You know, you've already sold yourself to the highest bidder. So now you can't, there, there's no climbing out the abyss. And um, when... What's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.